welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. In today's episode, we're going to be hitting a request that I've gotten, I've gotten a lot. And we are going to be doing it in just stunning fashion, guys. Like, I know I should probably stretch before I pat myself in the back, but I, I'm genuinely really proud of this project. So it does make sense why I've gotten this request so often. I've done a bow. I've done an arrow. The only thing we're really missing in this equation here is a badass quiver. <gasps> Not just any quiver, I'm dubbing this the Ranger's quiver. Look, it's got a little, got a little pouch in it. It's got an area for a knife to be held. It's all out of leather and it is sexy. I love this thing right down to the damn shoulder strap. So good. While making it, I had this nerdy vision of like a D&D style ranger, right? Like just out in the woods on a hunt for treasure and adventure, needing to carry everything they have in just a really small kind of capacity. And I think as you'll see, this pulls a lot of that off and looks good while doing it. Okay, so the whole reason of this show is to level up skills. And this is one of the first times with the leather crafting that I, I really feel like I see a significant jump in my skills. I mean, granted, I like the projects I've done so far and I've definitely been getting better as I practice, but so many different things had to come together to make this into what I want. And there was a lot of pre-thought and you'll see it, it, it's, it's a longer project, um, but I am really excited with how it came out, not only because it's awesome, but kind of what it means for me as a crafter. I feel like this is the first time I'm really seeing something where I'm like, I, I made that, that's amazing. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to make it too. So like I said, this is gonna be a long one. So without much further ado, let's level up this skill. Making templates. Just like so many a great project, it all starts with the drawing. I just kind of sketched a quiver how I would really like to have one in like a fantasy setting, right? I really wanted to have this little pocket for an extra string or maybe fire starting materials and also a place for a knife. If not, a, maybe a couple places for knives in the future. Y'all know how I like my extra knives. Also, I was originally gonna add these little metal spots like I did on my Witcher bracers, but that was more because I honestly didn't want to do a whole lot of tooling for this project. So originally, this was going to be one of my Monday quick skills because I saw a quiver as like a tube of leather. And that's pretty easy, right? You cut it, you stitch up the side and the bottom, boom, you have a quiver. But then you know how it is. I got started and it looked awesome. And then I had a vision and... But that frame of mind actually really helped me making this template because in its most basic form, a quiver really is just kind of a tube, right? So with that in mind, I just kind of rolled up this piece of paper to make a template. And because I wanted it to be wider on the top than at the bottom, I rolled it so that the paper tapered as it went down. Then just taped the seam there so it wouldn't unroll on me. Next, I used an arrow to mark how deep I wanted the quiver to be. So at that point, I had like the general shape and size that I wanted it to be at. But in order to turn this two-dimensional drawing into a 3D template, I, I decided to go the other way. I turned that 3D tube into a two-dimensional object just by squishing it flat. From this point, it was easier to just draw my design right onto it. Then just cut it out. For the top, I wanted to go with this nice stylized scoop design here. The thought being that when it's kind of on your back, having this come out a little bit further makes it so that when you're putting arrows away, the arrow will catch here and then kind of kind of fall into the quiver. And these little spikies here are just, honestly, just because I think they look really cool. <laughs> now using that length mark from where I position my arrow as a guide, I drew in my bottom design as well. Then cut away the excess paper. And with that little bit cut, it was already starting to take shape. And it's kind of cool to take note, like when you see the finished product, exactly how close it does follow along to that paper template you make. I guess all that to say, taking your time now and making sure you make that template correctly is really gonna save you in the end. That being said, I also wanted this little back ridge here to have this kind of an arch to it so that when it lays on my back, um, there's space for my back to kind of fit into it so it's not all turned wonky on me. To make that in the template, I just kind of freehanded an arc trying to keep it as smooth as possible, and then cut that out. Then I just taped that seam together and shoved a bunch of paper in there so I can see what it would look like when it's an actual kind of rigid shape. And I was ecstatic with how slick that looks. I honestly wasn't sure in cutting that out that once you put the seams together, everything would fit together right. I kind of thought maybe it would like overlap funny or it just 
it wouldn't make sense moving from a two-dimensional object into a three-dimensional space. But surprisingly, it just kind of worked and it looked awesome. So while I still had everything taped into the, the general shape, I needed to figure out this bottom piece here. Now, I was not sure how to make that perfect, so I just decided to trace half of the bottom of that shape. Then using a ruler to fold it perfectly in half, I cut the shape out. So I cut it in half because I wanted it to be symmetrical and because the template is made out of paper and it's not rigid, I didn't trust it to be kind of drawn all the way around and have it come out perfect. And surprisingly, it actually worked really well. The fit was exact. This happened kind of a lot with this project where I just kind of tried stuff. I wasn't sure going into it how it would work out, um, but it they all just kind of worked out. I'm kind of really happy with the templating process of this whole thing. So confident in that shape, I took out the paper and then I cut the tape off really carefully so that I didn't damage the template at all. Then I started working on the template for the pocket. I started by just drawing in where I thought a pocket would look cool. And because of the general shape of the quiver so far, I made it so that the pocket was wider at the top than it was at the bottom. Three inches on the top and two and a half inches on the bottom to be exact. And the design of this pocket is going to be basically just another small tube. So I used the same trick, just tapered the paper how I liked it and cut it to size, then taped the seam. So obviously in leather form, I didn't want it to be like an actual tube. I wanted it to be kind of squished down. So to make sure it looks right, I just kind of squished it into shape right up against my template. Happy with the size, I use my paper pocket to mark the dimensions of the top opening so I can draw in this little pocket flap here. I just kind of squared off the middle section and then drew in a little back area for rivets and finished off by extending the flap into this little closure area here. Then cut it out and tested it on my little paper pocket to be. And kind of throughout this whole process, it's like an act in visualizing, right? Like it's made out of paper, but picturing it in leather, that's gonna look pretty cool, I thought. Now to finish it off, make a little bottom section for the pocket here. I just did the same thing using the bottom of my template to trace the shape for the little butt cap. And again, once happy with that, I just cut the tape so that we can lay it flat and easily transfer it over onto the leather. All right, so now we have the general body of the quiver and the pocket, a little bottom here. Now we just need this outer jacket area. I really like the look of having an outer layer. Uh, it adds rigidity, first of all, because otherwise this is pretty kind of flimsy. But it also gives me a chance to add like this different texture to it and a different color and overall look. Seriously, I don't need any other reason except for the fact that it looks cool. It does look cool. Now to make this, I first cut some paper roughly to the length I want it to be at and folded it in half. Then I positioned that paper over the body of the quiver template and traced in that bottom shape design and the overall width. This way we know it's gonna match perfectly when we cut it out. Now happy with that, just like we did before, I drew in this general design how I wanted it to look. Then tried it on for size. Now, as per my original drawing there, I really wanted to be able to see this lacing over the top here. It just kind of adds this really neat rustic look and, and some more interest in the design. To achieve that though, I needed to cut this a little bit of a deeper arch than the actual quiver has. And again, I just kind of freehanded that and cut it out where I thought it would look cool. And with that long process there, the templates were cut and ready. Now I get a lot of requests for my templates whenever I finish one of these projects, which once I get further ahead in my videos, I'll, I'll gladly make them available to you. Um, I have to I have to transfer them onto a digital medium so that you can get them first. But by showing the process by how I make them, you're able to then make whatever you want. It might take a little bit more time up front to get it, but, but now that I have those templates, I've saved them. Those are mine now. I have them and they're exactly a shape that I envisioned in my head and I sketched onto a piece of paper. And you could do the same, just envision something, sketch it out, try it in some paper, and if it works, awesome. If it doesn't work, tweak it till it does. But at the end, it's gonna be yours and you're gonna understand how everything goes together a lot better. So yeah, now that that whole step's out of the way, we can move on to prepping the leather. For this project, I am using this beautiful eight ounce veg tan leather that I bought at Tandy's. This was the first time I bought leather online. I didn't actually get to see it beforehand and I couldn't be happier with the quality. It's really good. Not that I'm, not that I'm fishing for Tandy ad space here, but I'm just saying, Tandy, what's up with, what's up with the paying me here, huh? So with my leather all laid out, I positioned my templates in place to try to use as little of the leather as possible and tape them into position. Then I carefully cut around each one of them. As always, a sharp knife is a safe knife, so make sure you've got fresh razors for this process. And again, this is where all the prep work ahead of time is gonna come out. Because we did the templates and we tested everything thoroughly, we know these shapes are being cut exactly how we need them. Now freed from that leathery prison, I moisten the edges of each piece and go back in with a slicker to give it a nice finished look. 
if this is the first leather project you've seen. You do that because when you cut leather, you end up with all these little fibers on the ends and it looks kind of unfinished and nasty. By wetting it down and adding friction to it, it ends up being really shiny and, and very finished looking. It looks really good. And using my drill just makes it so much faster. This little honeycomb slicker brush is awesome for, for intricate kind of detail and, and whatever, but for big jobs like this one, drill every time. I also went ahead and cut this little keeper strap to help hold the pocket into place. So you're gonna see later on that I didn't end up using that kind of vertical small keeper strap, uh, just the longer one. And I'll explain why when we get to it, but you can use it if you want to. I decided that this way would look cooler and kind of hold more secure. That's later. For now, I busted out this little edge groove over here to make a consistent border all the way around my pieces. So next, I wanted to cut in the holes that these laces would go through. To get them to line up with each other perfectly though, I rolled the leather kind of into its final shape so that the edges touched. Then I marked the first hole so that I knew they were exactly across from each other. Next, I marked a half inch between each individual hole all the way around the perimeter. Then went back in and punched them all out. Now I did this on either side, so I, I started from this side and did a half inch down all the way until I reached this tip here, and then I did the opposite side. This should make sure that they're both gonna line up exactly the same. Now I also wanted to line up the holes that I needed to punch in the bottom here so that they would match whatever holes were coming around the perimeter. To do this, I just put in a temporary little piece of cord to help hold it into shape. Then I lined up the bottom and marked where all the holes should go. This way at least I had some level of confidence exactly uh, how this would all match up. It doesn't need to be perfect. That's the nice thing about leather is it's very forgiving. If the holes aren't exactly across from each other, it's not gonna be a big deal. Things stretch and move around, or it won't matter too much. But as close as possible, perfect. Okay, so that's the lace holes for the body of the quiver and the whole bottom here. The only other place we're gonna be lacing up is the pocket. This one I did in much the same way, just kind of reverse. First, I punched the holes in the bottom and then lined them up with the body of it to make sure that the holes would match up. Now I'm also gonna need to stitch this back seam area. And that's the one place that I'm gonna use regular stitches and not kind of leather cord here. That's just because it has to lay flat up against the rest of this quiver and I don't want to take up that extra space with kind of a fat leather cord. So back there, I just used this four hole punch to make sure everything lined up evenly. And that is the last step in prepping the leather. A much, a much shorter step than the template step. So now we can move on to tooling the leather. This is the stage in which we transform the leather into the sexy. I don't know if that was, it was creepy. It felt creepy. Sexy, I don't know, it just felt creepy. It is sexy, I stand by it. It looks good. <laughs> For starters, we're gonna wanna wet down our leather. This is because wet leather is pliable leather. You can put designs and stuff in the leather once it's been wet down. Next, I go along my little cut-in edge design there with an edge beveler to help separate it from the background. And that particular edge beveler used in that scene is the one that I, I made Right here. You wanna learn how to make stamps and stuff? You know, check it out. Now we're gonna get into some serious tooling though with this basket kind of weave design right here. To do this, I found this stamp through Tandy Leather and I loves it. It's so good. And it's really easy to use. Again, make sure your leather's all wet and then make your stamp. The stamp itself leaves little dots kind of in the corners so you can line up your next stamp and make sure the weave design makes sense. It really stands out and it makes this interesting design just super easily. Though I will say, when you're doing this much of that kind of tooling, it does get a bit tedious. You know, you line it up, you stamp, you line it up, you stamp. But the end result is undeniably awesome. And I say tedious, the whole thing probably took me about a half hour, 45 minutes-ish to do. Uh, well worth it, it looks great. And it's just one of those things that if you don't feel like you're artistically designed to cut in your own shapes or whatever, um, instantly satisfying. It looks amazing. Good, good job, Tandy. Again, I'm just saying. Now for the quiver body itself, I wanted to keep the design simple to play off kind of the busyness that this is down here. So after again, beveling my edges in, I put this top layer into place and added in this decorative cabochon just to get an idea of what the visible space there looks like. Then I used our template again to sketch in a flowing kind of branch and leaf pattern. Again, in my head, this belongs to a ranger, maybe the kind of a Lord of the Rings strider kind of ranger though, who has a bit of an elf influence, right? But I want this to look very naturalistic. A lot of leaf motifs, 
uh, the colors, something that'll disappear into the woods a little bit. That being said, I did want my design to be kind of perfectly symmetrical. To get that effect, I traced one half of the design with a Sharpie just to darken it. Then I busted out my favorite poor man's tracing paper, baking paper. It works really well as a tracing paper. It holds up well against moisture, which we need when we're tooling the leather. And it's way cheaper than buying dedicated tracing paper. Not laying my paper over my drawing, I was able to trace out my design. Then lining the center up perfectly with the template, I folded the whole thing in half. Now I was able to trace through the paper to get the other side. So just to explain that a little bit better, um, I had that design all drawn out. It was one half of the design, right? So then by folding it in half here, let me make sure I fold it in half. Right, so then by folding it in half, I was able to see through the paper to where the design was traced on and trace again the design on the paper itself. This way, everything that's drawn in on this side, I was able to trace through the paper onto this side and vice versa. Everything that kind of scooped over to this side, I was able to trace onto this side. I just didn't feel like the footage I got kind of displayed that clearly and I wanted to make sure you knew what I meant. And with that ready to go, I wet down my leather and positioned the image exactly where I wanted it. Then I went over the whole thing with the stylus. Again, since wet leather is pliable, the marks stay and leave me with a perfect guide. Now the vast majority of the stuff being done on here is being done with stamps. So again, if you don't feel artistically inclined to be able to carve this stuff into leather, this is all stuff you could totally do just with stamps. For this area, I found this really nice leaf stamp. It's simple, but it's really pretty and it goes for that whole motif I'm going for here. Using it, I just went along and stamped the very ends of each one of my little branchings that I had made. Then I went back in with these fern-like stamps that I had gotten when I was making my plague mask video just to add a little more extra organic detail. Finally, I went back over the whole thing with my swivel knife to cut in those branches. And these are super simple, just following arcing lines, nothing fancy. Now, I know you only ever see this top area, the rest of it is hidden and completely unnecessary to tool it. But I had read something somewhere that kind of always stuck with me that um, the, the bit that makes you like a craftsperson or an artisan um, isn't necessarily the parts that other people see, it's the parts that only you know exist, right? It's building something to the best of your abilities throughout the entire thing, not just the things that are visible. I don't know, I thought that was beautiful and it always stuck with me. So whenever I make a thing, I try to make it so that if it was ever disassembled, the person disassembling it will look at it and be like, oh wow, this goes all the way through. This is really nice. Again, I just think it's a really pretty thought. So sticking with it. Now to finish this step, I just position those cabochons where I wanted them to go. And then I push them into the moist leather. This left me with a little mark exactly where they're gonna sit, making it easy to punch the holes in the correct areas. And with that, the tooling phase is all done. We can move on to having some fun with color and dyeing. Now, since I'm going for a rangery kind of feel, I decided to go with kind of foresty greens and various brown colors for the whole scheme here. Basically something beautiful that can still vanish into the verdant woods. So I started by moistening the leather just a little bit so that the stain would go on more evenly. For my border, I'm gonna be using a moccasin brown. It's a darker color, but it has like a natural tree bark kind of vibe with it. Carefully, I used a brush to put the stain all around the border. My aim here was to keep it as even as possible without getting any of the stain into the middle area. Then I did the same with this front area here. The thought is with the two borders being the same, it's gonna help tie them together rather than having it look like kind of two separate entities that were just stuck together. I also went ahead and colored the backs because they're gonna be visible. I mean, you're gonna be able to see inside of here and you also can kind of see underneath here. So you wanna make sure everything looks completed. Now for this basket weave area here, I opted to use this light brown dye. This has like a nice natural warm tone, like fallen leaves. So you can see I'm hitting that woods motif real hard. Then finally, I used this Kelly green to fill in the rest of the body. I love this green. Depending on how you put it on, it could either be pretty light or dark, but no matter what, it's really deep. It's a very vibrant color. Now, as I went along, I also colored the pocket the same light brown and green to match the rest of the build. Now, I didn't film it for whatever reason, but I also colored the bottom the same Kelly green as the top. Okay, so I am a fan of the vignette. A vignette is basically like when the corners of the border of something are darker and they fade into the picture so that, you know, it kind of brings the focus into the lighter area, which is the middle. Just changes the focus and makes things look a little more aged and interesting. To add that effect to this project, I use my airbrush to add a little bit of black dye to the borders. Again, just darker on the outside and feathering it in towards the middle. 
And with that bit done, because I have some detail in here, I also wanted to add an antique. That's when you kind of seal the rest of the leather so it doesn't accept any more color. And then you add on kind of a thicker gel dye or a wax dye, usually of a darker color. What happens is that color gets into all the little grooves and makes them stand out more. It also does impart just a little bit more color and helps even out everything else. In general, like the name states, it antiques it. It makes it look a little bit more old, a little bit more used. For my resist or the thing that stops the leather from taking on any more dye, I'm using this Rosalind product. You just use a moist sponge and apply it evenly to the entire surface of the project. It dries completely clear and adds a really nice glossy shine to the whole thing. It also helps protect it from like water and grime and makes it a little easier to clean up all around a really good product. With that in place, I wiped in this dark brown antique, making sure it all sunk into every crevice and crack, then immediately wiped it away. And by adding that shadow into all the cracks because the product kind of stays in those deeper areas, it just makes all of that front area pop out a little bit more and look more interesting. Now for my final act of dyeing, I decided to make these laces here that I made match the rest of the trim. To do that, I just dumped some of the moccasin stain into a cup and dip dyed my lacing. This results in a nice even stain that matches the rest of the project just perfectly. Now with everything colored and frankly looking amazing, it's time to move on to putting it all together. This is the portion where we take all of the parts that we've prepped and made and put them together to make a sexy quiver. Nope, again, still feels creepy. Awesome quiver. Um, it's one of those things where once you know someone's watching you walk, you don't know how to walk. I don't know how to speak to the camera now. Anyways, to put this all together, I started by adding the cabochons on first. While putting these in place, I quickly noticed that I can kind of kill two birds with one stone. And rather than adding a rivet here to hold this front plate on, I could just use the cabochon and go all the way through both pieces. So I lined it up and I punched the hole through both layers where I think they needed to go. Then added the screw to the back to lock them in place. And fam, just like that was looking amazing. Like part of me was like, what else could I turn it into? if all else fails, just like that, like a coat of arms or something. I don't know, it looks awesome though. Now to further connect the two pieces together, I added a rivet to the bottom, then I punched where I wanted them on the sides. Now this is a part that takes a little bit more forethought here. When this is rolled into shape, where these holes land on, on the main body piece here are gonna be different than where they land when it's laid flat. So to make sure they landed exactly where I wanted them, I rolled it up into the position it was gonna be in before I marked my holes. Then I went ahead and punched them out. And once the rivets are connected, you can see how it doesn't lay flat. So if you made all your holes while it was laying flat, it would never roll up the right way again because that front would be too tight. Now's the portion in which we use that dyed cordage we made to make it look like a quiver. To stitch it together, I decided to use this really easy, just crisscross stitching pattern. This just entails taking each leg of the cordage that's coming through the holes and fishing them through diagonally into the next holes down, forming these little crisscrosses. And I really like that look for this build because it has kind of a rustic shape to it, right? It's not very refined, they're just kind of crisscrossed, they're utilitarian, they're holding it together. It's it's cool. It's really simple to do and it's, it's got a really nice look to it. Now the thought here was that when we're done stitching all the way to the bottom, we're going to continue to use that cordage to just stitch in the very bottom plate here. This is where I realized that that original rivet we put in here could actually play double duty and start by holding that into position. I also thought it was a good opportunity to go over just kind of how to remove a rivet if you need to, which is really easy because all you got to do is drill it out from the back. Once you're through the really thin metal, it'll just kind of pop out. But I just positioned the bottom into place and I put that rivet back in, helping to secure that bottom plate into position while I work. Now at this point, I changed that stitching pattern into a running stitch, which is just really kind of an in, out, in, out snaking pattern. This again continues that like every other whole rustic look and also helps secure that bottom in really well. And with that, the main body of the quiver is completed and we can move on to constructing this nifty pocket here. Now I started by stitching the back together using a baseball stitch. I go over how to do this stitch in this video up here. It's a really nice stitch to use when you want two sides of a seam to come together flush. And once the tube of my pocket is all assembled, I tacked on the flap with some rapid rivets all along that little back gusset I made. This made for a really clean and secure hold. Okay, so the way I designed this to work is the strap that holds the pocket closed also goes through the jacket of the quiver here, connecting the pocket actually to the quiver. 
That being said, because it does hold this pocket into place, I wanted to make sure it was really securely attached. So when getting ready to stitch the bottom section into place, I lined up the holes in the bottom of that strap as well and used my cordage to stitch everything together. And for this stitch, I just used kind of a simple looping stitch all the way through. Again, really simple, rustic design, looks cool with the whole thing. Now at this point, I was worried that the strap here would allow this pocket to kind of move back and forth. To get around this, I decided to cut two slits into this top flap area, just a little bit wider than the actual strap is. By doing this, I gave myself a place to be able to slide that strap through and help keep it in place. With that ready, I positioned the pocket where I wanted it to lay on the quiver and made some marks of where I wanted to cut slits into the outer jacket. Then I carefully cut into just that layer of the leather. That allows my straps to pass through and secure the pocket to the quiver. And I really like this design for two reasons. One, because it becomes interchangeable at that point. I can make other pockets or other like little knife holders or whatever and use that same strap moving through the slits design to secure it into place. Secondly, I can really easily just pull that strap back through and now I can actually loop this onto a belt. It's got a, it's got a hole here. So now I can just position it there and I can carry just this case with me in case everything I needed is just in here. I love it when you get multiple uses out of a thing and now I just have this nifty pocket I can put on any belt. Now again, as I had said before, I had originally cut like a little leather keeper to keep this in place. But then looking at it, I just didn't think it would be secure enough. I was worried that this little strap would slip out of it. So instead I punched two holes in the strap as well as in the face of the pocket. Then just fish some cordage through. Now when you tie it off, it's much more secure. This isn't going anywhere. And I really kind of like that look of the, the hanging little leather cordage here. You of course can use that keeper or make a buckle or do whatever you want. I just kind of like this look. Now for a final and badass detail, I wanted to add a knife to the whole thing. Again, you're a ranger and you've used the arrows from within your quiver to hunt down your food. Then you go ahead and prepare it with your knife and then light a campfire with the tinder that you keep inside your little pocket here. Like a self-contained little system here. This is really easy. I just positioned the knife where I wanted it and made a slit just a little wider than the knife itself. Now the knife just slides right in between the two pieces of leather. And because we've got this little rivet here, it actually gets tighter as it goes down and secures this into place. That being said, next time I would probably add just an extra little piece of leather back here just to make sure the knife isn't scratching up against the, uh, the quiver itself. Again, I know you just, you can't even see inside of there and it's basically the same thing as having two pieces of leather sandwich it in, but I don't know, I worked hard on the design and I don't want the knife scratching up against it. Now to secure it in place and keep it from moving about, I went ahead and added this little cordage. That was just done by punching two holes on either side of the handle of the knife and threading the cord through. And fam, at this point, I love this design. The look is just incredible. But don't get too excited, because it's not done yet. At this point, you're just kind of carrying a quiver through the woods. No, to make this thing useful, we're gonna need to attach a strap. So to actually be able to attach a strap to this quiver, I went ahead and cut these three quarter inch wide strips to attach these D rings to. The plan is to just connect them to the top and the bottom of the quiver with some rivets. Now for the strap itself, I just cut a strip of leather an inch and a half wide. Now the prepping and the decorating of this is all the same for what I did on the quiver. Like I slicked the edges, added a border, and then beveled said border into place. Now to go with the same kind of ranger motif, I used that same leaf stamp again and cut the branches in with my swivel knife. Then I added extra leaves just to fill in the empty space. And I really love how this simple design looks. It definitely has kind of a fantasy vibe to it and I really like that. For colors, I used the same moccasin brown for the border and Kelly green for all the center areas. Then again, I added the resist before finally finishing it off with an antique. And here you can really see how the antique brings out that whole design. Just darkens it up and really makes it pop. I also dyed little strips here and locked the D-rings into place with some rivets. Then I went ahead and riveted them into place at the top and the bottom of the quiver. So this area of the outer jacket here worked really well for this attachment point. I wasn't sure what to do with it because I like the look of it scooping out like this, but I didn't want it to attach into um, the quiver itself and cover up the lacing. But yeah, by kind of leaving it like this, it gave the straps a nice attachment point. Like I meant to do it, I didn't. I'm just kind of winging it here. Another thing I was unsure with was how I actually wanted 
the, the strap to connect to the quiver. I wanted to be able to remove it. I'd like to be able to also make this into a hip quiver eventually, or, you know, just have options with this, this belt here. So to solve that, I came up with this little buckle design here. They're just half inch buckles secured to a short strip of leather. First, I secured about a five inch long strip to the end of the strap and attached it to the underside with a rivet. Then I connected that buckle strap with a rivet to the top side. Once in place, I just punched holes into that strip of leather to make a little belt. Now I simply loop it around the D-ring and lock it into place with the buckle. And again, I'm really kind of proud of that attachment point. Like you could put in those little spring hook clamp things there, but it just looked too kind of modern for me. Uh, I, I wanted it to look like something that could have been built maybe in medievalish times. And that I think really pulls it off nicely. Now to put a bow on this project, I measured that strap for length. After cutting it to size, I put this awesome buckle I bought from Tandy's into place and cut out the area for the keeper to sit. And then I added rivets to lock it all together. Finally, I punched holes every inch to give me plenty of options to adjust the tightness level. And check this out! I love this thing! See how the arch we cut into it hugs my back, keeping it straight? Oh, and watch it in action. The scoop in the back makes adding more arrows to it super easy and everything is just perfectly positioned to be able to draw arrows quickly. Words cannot express how much I love this thing. Oh, and this shot I'm about to show you clearly demonstrates what I love about doing this show. In this shot, I just took an arrow that I made from a quiver that I made to shoot from a bow that I made. Bam, we learn how to do really cool stuff here. I'm, I'm quite proud of the projects we've accomplished. Now again, this was requested a lot from all of you. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope I was able to do it justice. If you did like it, why don't you hit me with some of that thumbs up love and do not forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also, if there are any other projects you wanna see covered, leave it down in the comment section and I will add it to the list. Also, a huge thanks goes to all of my Patreon members. Without you, buying these materials and taking the time to be able to do these longer projects would be just infinitely harder. If you're interested in supporting the show and becoming a Patreon member, the link to my Patreon is in the description below. Every little bit helps and keeps me making projects that you request. All right, well, I better get going. Some poor nobleman's going down the King's Road, just laden with gold. My merry monkeys and I are gonna have to help him lighten his load. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.